Hello, hello, hello. This is day 11 of 24 of the Cyber Advent of Cyber 2023 by TriHack Me event, which I have made an accessibility showcase of. Um, yesterday's event was fun. Today's going to be more of me talking and less doing, I'm afraid, but we're going to have to see how far we can get. Um, this is, once again, one of those um, ones that I had to do the answers for beforehand because... There is zero guarantee we're going to be able to get anywhere with this today. Um, while it is absolutely true that it's all command line based, it's also all within the VM, which is only in split screen view. So we don't even have RDP this time. We only have a split screen view, um, which means we're completely reliant on OCR, which is going to fail at some point because I can already see when looking at what we have currently open no CR in that, it says AII, AII rights reserved instead of all rights reserved. Now, given we have to copy release like specific certificates across, I don't think we're going to be able to manage it today. But let's see how far we get. Um, today's question, this thing is about Active Directory and um, Shadow Credentials, Shadow Spells. Jingle Bell Shadow Spells is the title of this particular task. So what I'm going to be doing is read... What we can read and then um I'll probably get hopefully stuck and then we'll uh, hopelessly stuck rather not hopefully that never is a good thing to happen but uh once that's happened we can uh we can we can just start and see how we do um <clears throat> excuse me this is not gonna be a super long one now yesterday's was like over an hour long this one's gonna be probably half an hour tops um given how fast we're going to have to give up probably and I'm not saying that to be a doomsayer. I'm saying that because I'm pretty sure it's that's what what the, that's the kind of task it's going to be. We have too few tools at our, expo at our disposal to do it this way. Uh, if we had RDP and audio on the VM, <clears throat> we could enable narrator and do this entire thing properly. Um, given we don't have either, yeah, not going to happen. So let's read this. Um, you can totally see it's a different hand. I actually got thanked by the person uh, making task 10 yesterday, uh, day 10 task yesterday on my YouTube video. Thanks a lot for that. I appreciate being told that my stuff actually, you know, is helping people. That's why I'm making it. Um... <clears throat> so without further ado, let's just continue with the task here. Machine's already started because I want to get through this quickly, honestly. Like, I don't think we need um, to stretch this out, stretch out the pain, as it were. <clears throat> Task banner for day 11. We don't get to have a description for the banner this time. I was, <clears throat> I was also told that the um, descriptions from yesterday's task were in fact not AI driven. Which uh, it makes me even more impressed, honestly. But there you go. Uh, the story. Antarcticraft's technology stack was very specialist, special, specialized. Sorry, It was primarily focused on cutting edge climate research rather than prioritizing robust cybersecurity measures. Uh-oh. As the integration of the two infrastructure systems progresses, vulnerabilities begin to su surface. While Antarcticraft's team displays remarkable expertise, their small size means they need to emphasize cybersecurity awareness. Throughout the room, you'll see that some users have too many permissions. Uh -oh. We addressed most of these instances in the previous audit. But if, is everything now sorted out from the perspective of the HR user? The HR user, that's an important user. Learning objectives. Understanding Active Directory. Introduction to Windows Hello for Business. Prerequisites for exploiting generic right privilege. Generic right privilege sounds like a social justice thing. How the shadow credentials attack works. How to exploit the vulnerability. Connecting to the machine. <clears throat> Before moving forward, review the questions in the connection card shown below. All right, so we have a connection card that says, what should I do today? Connection card details, start the attack box and the target machine, and a split screen view iframe is available for the target. I honestly don't even think we'll need to start the attack machine today. I don't think we'll get that far. We'll see. To deploy the EVM, press the green and start um, machine button at the top of the task. The machine will start in a split screen view. If the VM is not visible, use the blue show split view button at the top right of the page. We've already done that. 
In the attached VM, you will find the POC files required for exploitation. <clears throat> Additionally, you will have to start the attack box by pressing the blue start attack box button at the top right of this page. <clears throat> Active Directory 101. An image of Forensic McBlue. We don't know what's significant about it. Active Directory, or AD, is a system mainly used by businesses in Windows environments. It's a centralized authentication system. The Domain Controller, or DC, is at the heart of AD and typically manages data storage, authentication, and authorization within a domain. You can think of AD as a digital database containing objects like users, groups, and computers, each with specific attributes and permissions. Ideally, it applies the principle of least privilege and uses a hierarchical approach to managing roles and giving authenticated users access to all non-sensitive data throughout the system. For this reason, assigning permissions to users must be approached cautiously, as it can potentially compromise the entire Active Directory. Active Directory. We'll delve into this in, an, in the upcoming exploitation section. Uh, we have an image of Active Directory. I'm pretty sure it's just a representation of what they just said. Kind of sad that we don't have all text for this. <laughs> Think passwords are hard to remember. Say hello to WHFB. Microsoft introduced Windows Hello for Business, WHFB, as the modern and secure way to replace conventional password-based authentication. Instead of relying on traditional passwords, WHFB utilizes cryptographic keys for user verification. Users on the Active Directory domain can access the AD using a PIN or biometrics connected to a pair of cryptographic keys, public and private. Those keys keep the, keep, help to prove the identity of the entity to which they belong. This MSDS key credential link is an attribute used by the domain controller to store the public key in WHFB for enrolling a new user device, such as a computer. In short, each user object in the Active Directory database will have its public key stored in this unique attribute. Uh, an image that just says the alt text Windows Hello for Business, which is completely pointless. Here's the procedure to store a new pair of certi certificates with WHFB. 1. Trusted Platform Module TPM Public-Private Key Pairs Generation The TPM creates a public-private key pair for the user's account when they enroll. It's crucial to remember that the private key never leaves the TPM and is never disclosed. 2. Client Certificate Request the client initiates a certificate, certificate request to receive a trustworthy certificate. The organization's certificate issuing authority, CA, receives this request and provides a valid certificate. Key storage. Number three. The user account's MSDS key credential link attribute will be set. Four. Graphic. <laughs> The graphic thing that says Active Directory Attributes Authentication Process. That's, I guess, another little diagram. One, authorization. The domain controller decrypts the client's pre authentication data using the raw public key stored in the MSDN, MSDS dash key credential link attribute of the user account. Okay. Two, certificate generation. The certificate is created for the user by the domain controller and can be sent back to the client. Number three, authentication. After that, the client can log into the Active Directory domain using the certificate. So essentially we bypass the whole entirety of needing someone's password um, because there is essentially no password. You use the certificate instead. We have another uh, diagram that has the alt text authentication process. Okay, helpful, I guess. Please note that an attacker capable of overriding the MSDS key credential link of a specific vulnerable user can compromise it. Honestly, 
uh, at the top of this page it says that these are beginner friendly um like learning challenges for this one and a couple of other ones this year i don't really agree that that's true this sort of tells you a little bit but there's a lot here that's not being explored oh let me turn off the system noises real quick because i'm hearing quite a few of them going off at the moment we don't want that there uh okay this is where it gets fun let's see enumeration now is your chance to shine and ensure no security misconfigurations are lurking in the shadows our magnificate oh so let's get started by dusting off our magnifying glasses or mouse pointers. <laughs> Enumerating the Active Directory for the vulnerable permission is the first step to check if the current user has any write capabilities over another user on the AD. So that has to do with that um, attribute that we were talking about before, if someone can overwrite that. Because if you can do that, then you can essentially gain leverage and gain a foothold. To achieve this, you can use the PowerShell script power view with the following command. Find interesting domain ACL. Find dash interesting domain ACL. Okay. This functionality will list all the abusive, uh, abusable privileges. It's then possible to filter for the current user, HR. We are specifically looking for any write privilege since the goal is to overwrite the MSDS key credential link from the vulnerable machine. Uh, oh, that's just a, a dot miss, a period missing there. Okay. From the vulnerable machine, launch PowerShell, which is pinned on your taskbar and enter the following commands. CDC users HR desktop. Okay, let's try that. See if we can get at least that done. CDC users HR desktop. Did we do it? I'll slow it down for the mere mortal mortals in the room. There we go. Just a moment here. There we go. Okay, well. My split view is gone, that's annoying. Just a moment here. There we go. Okay. So control brings the uh, thing back. That's good to know, I guess. Well, let's try this again. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. We're going to try to... I didn't type those commands. I'm not sure what we're looking at here. I wonder if we're seeing the history for somebody else, because I didn't type these commands yet. Very strange. All right, well, um, it's just pwd, cdc, users, hp, desktop. Give it one more try. If it doesn't work, then too bad. We're just going to not bother. Oh, is my caps lock on? Apparently it was. Okay, let's try this again. Since when is PowerShell case sensitive? Oh dear, I, I'm, I'm really out of practice with the PowerShell. All right, let's try this again. 
Is this HR desktop? Boom. Did it work that time? How about we just do this bit by bit then? See the users, see the HR, see the desktop. Last attempt. If that doesn't work, too bad. Yeah, okay. I hope it's clear that it's like... I hope it's clear why I don't want to do this anymore at this point. Um, if I'm doing like a really important thing, then absolutely sure I'll try doing it this way. And I have a blog article on my on my article on my website that does this for the Eternal Blue. But for this, where we don't really even have much of a like uh, way forward, just do this one thing, and that's just how to show it off. I, I don't want to, frankly. I don't care to do it. I don't want to do it because it's way too much effort for way too little payout. So, sorry. Uh, because of the accessibility issues, we're not going to be able to finish the task in the way it was, prevent uh, was uh, intended, which I pretty much already saw coming, which is why we already have the answers filled in for this one. I'm still going to cover what you actually were supposed to be doing, and I'll cover how I would have been how I would have done it. But I'm not going to actually be doing it because, well, frankly, I can't. So. Um, yeah, sorry for the not so riveting video today. Nothing I can do about it. I am being disabled by the fact that I was not thought about during this, uh, during various stages of development of the platform. And, um, the feedback that I have provided about that has been submitted, I'm assuming. Um, I've been assured that it has been. So now I am at the mercy of people deciding if I get to use this site the way it was intended or not, which is a fun place to be in. Um, let's hope if they uh, if they deem me worthy of not being discriminated against. <laughs> All right, so um, let's uh, just continue through the theory here then, if we're not going to do the practicals. I tried. CDC, here we are. Okay, so... We were going to go to the desktop, then we're going to run PowerShell-EP bypass, which is just bypasses the execution policy. Fair enough, that will um, let you run commands you otherwise not be allowed to. Then we do dot space dot backslash powerview.ps1, which is runs this script and puts it in memory, basically. So we have access to its constituent parts, as, as it were. Then we run this find dash interesting domain ACL dash Next word, dash resolve GUIDs. And remember that these are case sensitive. So the R in resolve and the G in GUIDs is capitalized. As you may say, the command will return all users privileges since we are spe specially looking for the current user, HR. We need to filter out using, again, where dash object left brace dollar underscore dot identify reference name dash eq quote hr quote right brace which is just a fancy powershell way of saying uh dash u hr basically just like this user this particular user um is what we're interested in we're interested in the current user the vulnerable user and the privileged assigned we can select object identify reference name object dn active directory rights uh oh <laughs> Dropbox just yanked my focus. Thanks for that Dropbox. All right. Uh, select object identity reference name object DN active directory rights. So none of this is explained. It just tells you, go type this. And that's why I say, I don't think this task is all that beginner friendly. Honestly, you have no idea what you're doing and why. I don't know what an object DN is. I don't know what uh, any of this means. Like there's one command we run later later on that does get explained, but everything else is just kind of sort of, hey, go do this thing. Um, stuff will happen. 
You don't need to know why. I don't know. Yesterday's task was really good about explaining, okay, this is what you're doing. This is why you're doing it. This is what's going to be returning. And this is like, here, do this. Yeah, and you're done. I don't know. It just feels rough for like a complete beginner to just, okay, I'll go do this. Anyway, now you can launch the full command, which is essentially these three things we just mentioned with pipe characters in between them, similar to what we did with the uh, log analysis room earlier. So when you do that, you get like a, we get a little, uh, we get a little um, run of how that would look like. And essentially the only difference here is, and I don't think this is pointed out very clearly either, but um, administrator is here, um, it's placed in here says generic rights uh, uh, yeah this is the command so it says cn equals administrator and if you were to run this yourself you would see a different username um a little bit later it says it could be different which is a subtle hint to actually run this and not just rely on the screenshot which fair enough but oh, this isn't the screenshot this is a screen print i guess but, um, yeah, I don't think this was super, like, well indicated. I'm sorry, I just don't like this task very much. I'm, I'm sorry. But, um, basically, what, if we were to run this, and we, we didn't, but if we were, let's just say we did, we would see that it would not say CN equals administrator, we would say it would say CN equals Van Sprinkles instead. We've seen that name before. So, I believe he's, like, McGreedy's helper. So, it makes sense that the name will be up there. Uh, maybe I got those names wrong, but anyway, that's the target user that we need to use at this point. So if I were to be able to do this with RDP on and audio on, what I would probably do is I would go run Narrator at this point, the uh, built-in Windows screen reader. It would happily chatter at me, I would open a PowerShell window, and I could use the Narrator commands to uh, copy-paste various things from the output into the notepad, which I could then use to actually run the subsequent commands to get the answers to the uh, questions that we need okay as you can see from the previous um output the user hr has the generic rights permission that's right that's up here in the uh, code fragment we see up here over the administrator object visible on the cn attribute later we can compromise the account with that privilege by upgrading of updating the msds key credential link with a certificate see that's what we were explained earlier this vulnerability is known as the Shadow Credentials Attack. Sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card to me, but okay. Uh, the vulnerable user may not be the same as the administrator. Please note that down since you will use it in the explanation. It's the exploitation section. Yeah, <clears throat> it may not be the same as administrator. Okay, if I read that in a certain light, I can see what they mean, but it just it just feels off to me text but okay that's not accessibility comment so i don't really have any like right to speak of that here exploitation that's the fun part one helpful tool for abusing the vulnerable privilege is whisker a c-sharp utility created by um elat shamir using whisker is straightforward once we have a vulnerable user we can run the add command from whisker to simulate the enrollment of a malicious device so like a computer like we said before updating the msds key credential link attribute this task can be accomplished by running the following command um, whisker.exe add and then slash target underscore administrator so target would be van sprinkles in this case in your case you'll have to replace the target parameter with the one from the enumeration step executed in, inside in, inside your vm the one what exactly the one user okay fair but that, i don't know again wording exploit the vulnerable privilege okay so we have like a sort of an, again a, a code thing that shows it off get a whole bunch of output but the ones that are important have a little plus sign in front of them that says updated the msds dash key credential link attribute of the target object and then another one that says you can now run Rubius with the following syntax. Rubius.exe ask tgt slash user underscore uh, colon administrator slash certificate colon a whole bunch of letters and digits. You could not type this over if you tried. 
All right, so that's just something you would paste. Uh, then slash password colon some other thing. I guess that's part of the certificate generated as well. Domain AOC.local and uh, slash DC underscore South Pole dot AOC dot local. That's the deal. And get credentials slash show, which I guess would also show the NTLM hash and things. The tool will conveniently provide the certificate necessary to authenticate the impersonation of the vulnerable user. <clears throat> with a command ready to be launched using Rubius. The core ID behind the authentication in AD is using the Kerberos protocol, which provides tokens, DGT, for each user. I thought I heard something about them discontinuing that. Anyway. A TGT can be seen as the session token that avoids the credentials prompt after the user authentication. That whole sentence has a lot to unpack. What's well, a session token? I mean, I know all this. I'm a developer, but seriously, it's not a beginner-friendly thing to say. Ruby is a C-sharp toolset designed for um, direct Kerberos interaction and exploitation. Was developed by Spector Spector Ops. They passed the hash. A huh? passed the hash attack. What? Oh, I see. That's a ha okay. That's a heading. Apparently, you can continue the exploitation by asking for a TGT of the vulnerable user using the certificate gener generated in the previous command. Uh, we have a exploit McRed elf uh, graphic here. Once you have obtained the certificate, you can acquire a valid TGT and impersonate the vulnerable user. Additionally, the NTLM hash of the user account can be displayed in the console output, which can be used for a pass the hash back. You can continue the exploitation by asking for a... Okay. Well, yeah, we just did this. To do so, copy and paste the output from the previous command. A detailed explanation of what that command is doing can be seen below. Okay. We can now run the blah, 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 blah. We just read this command already. So here we have everything that uh, we're asking for here. Let's see what it says. As TPT, this will make a request to obtain the TGT slash user, the user we want to impersonate. So that would be Vent Sprinkles in this case, slash certificate, the certificate generated to impersonate the target user. Password is the password used for decoding the certificate since it's encrypted. Uh, slash domain, the target domain, uh, target domain, slash get credentials, this flag will retrieve the NTLM hash, which will be used in the next step, slash DC, the domain controller that will generate the TTT. Obtain the NTLM hash. Here we have a thing of the, if we, are we doing that? I don't think we see the actual important bits. We have some ASCII art here too, that's cute, of the, uh, of the command. Do we see the NTLM hash in this? Can you get that from the output? That will tell me if I need to put this in the description or not. Action, I see it. Uh, using PKI in it with a uh, whole bunch of output, building, uh, using domain controller, blah. EGT request successful. Base 64 ticket, curve, yeah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a wrong, actually, the wrong. So you can't use this from the thing. I think this is for the uh, for the mythical uh, administration user. You can now execute a mass. You can now use execute a pass the hash attack using the NCLM hash obtained from the previous command. This attack involves leveraging the encrypted password stored in the domain controller rather than relying on the plain text password, which we don't have. So that makes sense. To do this, you can use Evil WinRM, a tool for remotely managing Windows systems, abusing the Windows Remote Management WinRM protocol. 
<clears throat> well, evil winner, uh, evil dash winrm dash i IP address. So that's 1010.172.222 in this case. Dash u administrator in this case, Van Sprinkles. Dash h, uh, that would be the hash. Uh, and essentially, from that point onwards, we don't really have to read the rest. From that point onwards, you get a shell, pro you get a Windows uh, shell on the attack box, and you can go look for the flag. Um, which I can't go do either because I don't have the right certificate to do it properly. So what I had to go do is look at a YouTube video of someone doing this task and ask uh, ChatGPT what the filled-in values were for the questions. It actually did a thing I was not expecting. When I just outright asked it, what is the answer to the question? It said, uh, I can't help you with that because you need to learn it by yourself, basically. But if I was more specific and I said, what is the filled in answer on the screen, it would it would happily tell me. So without further ado, let's go through the questions. Um, <clears throat> what is the hash of the vulnerable user? That is a 32 character uh, hexadecimal string. I'll have the computer read it. That's a delta. That's a bravo. That's a delta. That's another delta. Echo. There we go. That is all the characters for the hash. I think I will put this in a video, actually. Video description, so I'm just copying it to my little notepad. The flag is a lot easier. I'm not going to put that in the description because it's super stupid and simple. Very simple this time. The flag is capitals THM left brace Xmas is safe with underscores in between and all letters capitalized. And then of course, those three words are in left and right braces. With that, we have all the answers to the questions. There's only two questions and a couple like, yeah, okay, if you want to check this out, you can check this out as model, module rather. So yeah, that's really all we can do in this case. There's just not much more we can do. Uh, unfortunate as that is, yesterday's was very accessible. This one is not. Let's see what tomorrow brings. With that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Uh, have a good night. Goodbye.